All right, everybody, this is Ross, and in today's video, I'm gonna be amending this raised bed. Uh, and then, in a later video, I'm gonna be planting directly into this with some arugula that uh, I'll direct seed. And then also, the remainder of my sugar snap pea plants, I have a, another tray of just about this many in the greenhouse as well. And those will all be for shoots rather than for the pods. I've decided, why waste this space here? So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, dig around a bit and mix this up because I, in this section of the raised bed, I planted quite a bit of diatomaceous earth and I wanna mix that in around the entire bed. There's also probably some bigger pieces, some things like this. We gotta get this out of here. And uh, that's it. We're gonna mix this in. And then I also have a whole wheelbarrow of soil that I took from my persimmon tree in the front of the house. And that persimmon tree uh, had too fertile of a soil. I was building the soil up for years and years, three years, I had over three inches of topsoil around the tree. And I've got almost an entire wheelbarrow of soil here that I have been creating over there that it's not really necessary. In fact, it's not necessary. It's also probably a detriment. So knowing all that, I decided to move it rather than go out and find myself some soil. We have soil that's here. We created that's wonderful. So I figure why, why go through all that, right? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, I had some diatomaceous earth just lying around, and I figured I'd throw it in here and mix it in as a soil amendment, but I added so much of it, I never got around to really mixing it in well. So that's what I'm sort of doing right now. Because actually, it was kind of like a cakey mess just right in here of diatomaceous earth. And if I didn't mix that in, this side of the bed here probably wouldn't have done all that well in the future. It kind of formed like a clay mess. And I'm still seeing some of it right in here. We're just kind of breaking it up. All right, so now I put that shovel down. I'm gonna get my amendments here. I don't think I really need this, but it can't help, it can't hurt. We're gonna throw in some organic fertilizer here. This stuff takes a while to break down. So might as well add it now. In fact, it probably should have been added in the fall. And then I've also got some ironite here. This is just from extra added micronutrients. Not going crazy with it. I don't really need a whole lot of that. In fact, I may need none of it, to be honest with you. See, here's these diatomaceous earth clumps. It's like a clay ball of diatomaceous earth. So rather than leaving this like this, I gotta crumble this up and I gotta spread it throughout this bed. So that's why I took the time to do that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have tilled the soil like I just did. You know, that would have been probably a bad thing. You know, I subscribe to the, uh, really to the no dig method of growing vegetables, which is, I guess, you kind of just put down layers of compost year after year, and that adds the fertility to the soil. Um, and if you just keep adding compost, you're good. You have a good amount of water, 
in the soil. It's pretty constant. Um, I won't have to water here one little bit, especially if I can get some of the roots of these plants to get down into the clay underneath. That is really got tons of water in it. But we just raised this raised bed even higher. And the reason we did that is because this is going to be my heat loving bed. And this heat loving bed is gonna have crops in it that like the heat, we're in a, south, a southern exposure. So the more, we can give it even more heat in my short season climate simply by raising the soil into a mound, AKA a raised bed. So we're really increasing the metabolisms, the soil temperature. It's a no brainer. It works for just about every single plant. Every plant has an optimal metabolism that they like to grow at. That temperature, that soil temperature is optimal. Just like the amount of sunlight hours, we forget about the soil temperature quite often. And that's a big one. I'm also seeing if I have any big pieces, we're getting rid of that. Breaking up anything that needs to be broken up. And that's really it here. Just mixing this all in. If there's any weeds, get rid of it. Now, ideally in the spring or in the fall, I should have had some kind of covering on this. Cause I would have got, if I put down some mulch, even just a thin layer of mulch, I would have had some free worm castings by this time of the year. The worms would have came in, they would have multiplied, they would have loved it, and they would have pooped everywhere. And I would have worm castings on the top of my soil. And they're in here, you know, don't get me wrong, there's definitely worm castings in here, even though I didn't cover the soil. But there would have been more. All right, now we have to dump this last wheelbarrow in. And uh, it's really not sunken down enough. So it looks like there's more soil here than there is. So this little extra bit here should really help. And this is the really good stuff here. This is from that persimmon tree, as I mentioned. Get you guys a different view here, of what's going on. And that persimmon tree, I'm telling you, with all those wood chips, all that comfrey, all those different things that I was putting down year after year, turned into the most beautiful soil, I'm telling you. There's some clay in there, that native clay that I have which I guess is not a horrible thing because it's going to help contain, hold some of that moisture in here now that we're a bit higher up. Because when you go higher up with the soil, you know, you're going to run out of water quicker. You're going to lose that soil moisture quicker, but you're also going to gain that heat. So there's a trade-off. And uh, it's really up to you. It depends on the crop you're growing, you know? If I'm growing lettuces, which we are gonna grow arugula and uh, these peas, you know, cool loving crops in here to begin with, beginning of the season, they're not gonna be in here long term. This is really meant for crops that love the heat and don't mind a little bit of lack of water. Tomatoes, if you underwater them, will be sweeter, have a higher bricks, higher fruit quality. We are not gonna water this raised bed one little bit this year. The soil is nice and moist, perfect moisture content right now. It only will maintain this until about June. Um, and it'll start to slowly from June, like the longest day of the year, until about August, will it lose some of that perfect moisture that we have. And the reason for that is just, we just have so much rain, so much moisture, guys, that we don't really have an issue here. Um, it's pretty nice. 
with having, you know, really no desire, no need to water, unless it's about July or August. Maybe even parts of September if it's if it's dry. Uh, otherwise, you do all this stuff right now that I'm doing. You set this whole bed up right from the beginning, and you're succeeding just by doing this right from the start. I got a rock here. I'm gonna take that out. Seeing some different pieces here, what the, and whatnot that really are not all that necessary for this. I don't really want in here. Wood chips. You know, trying to break it apart because I want it to be even in here. And I don't know, you may notice, I don't know if you can notice it now, but before, I'll show you guys, there was uh, some straw over here. That's pretty good. This is gonna sink, and it's not the end of the world. You know, we're gonna sink probably another inch or two on top of this. And you can walk on this, guys. It's just compost. There's a lot of air in this stuff. And I'm just kind of tampering it down so I can get a firm seed bed. I need a firm bed to seed into, guys. That's a big tip that nobody really tells you. If you don't have a firm bed, you're gonna have uneven germination. So I'm sort of taking out the air out of this. I could water it in. But less work. Alright. So that's pretty even here. Let me can just smooth it out. Make it nice and even here. We got ourselves our amendments in. And you can go even crazier with the amendments if you guys really want. If you, depending on your soil content, what this stuff needs. You know, you can go some gypsum, some lime. You need to adjust the pH, maybe even some sulfur. Uh, is, I think it's sulfur that they use for blueberries. I can't remember what the name of that stuff is. Actually, this is pretty well it's a good height here. I like this height. This is exactly the amount of soil for the most part I wanted. Probably do with a little bit more, but it's pretty good. And then I'm gonna direct seed into this, guys. There's a few spots in here that need a little bit more. We can always come back in here later in the season and add a little bit of soil. I don't wanna add too much. We can also do this in the fall. I don't think anyone's gonna kill me if we don't have this thing perfect, right? So, that's the video, guys. I hope that made some sense. I hope everybody uh, is understanding really the basics here. Figure out what it is that you need in your soil, okay? If you need nitrogen, add some nitrogen fertilizer. Pretty unlikely. You just add compost every year, you're gonna be golden here, all right? Um, get yourself an inch or two every year. Start out with a nice base if you're doing this from scratch. Put down that layer of cardboard. Kill all those weeds. And then put down all your compost. Four inches of compost, you're gonna be golden. This braised bed here is about eight inches high, but the soil is probably gonna sink down to about six inches. So uh, I'll have a six inch raised bed. It's gonna give me a ton of heat, the south facing slope that we're on here. This is south, and uh, we're gonna be golden for this season. Anything that grows in this bed is gonna do phenomenally well in the spring. So it's March 1st. Do the sugar snap peas for shoots, the arugula, direct seeded. We're gonna cover that with mesh, and then come spring around May and, uh, and June, like mid-May to June 1st, we'll go in some of these heat-loving crops that love that heat, I could probably get away with it May 1st, as I have done in the past, but even more so I can get away with it now because the, the soil's raised, higher, higher soil temperature, guys, higher metabolisms, earlier transplant date. And as I said, 
figure out what you guys need in your soil and add that in. It's really not rocket science. Cover all your bases. The uh, ironite or green sand is a good, a good product. Rock dust will cover all those micronutrients. Just like us as humans, we want to cover all of our vitamins and minerals, right? And you know what? You don't want to overfeed these things because it's just not necessary. There's only so much that can be available. And what's in your soil may be so, may contain so much of those nutrients, but only a little bit of it is available. So, you know, everything's got to be in balance for it to really be able to up, uptake those nutrients. It's just like a fat soluble vitamin with us as humans. You know, in order to absorb A, D, E, and A, and K, <laughs> that's five, I said A twice. But in order to absorb those, five, those four, uh, you just need to eat it with some fat. Take the vitamin with some fat and you'll absorb it a lot better. It's the same thing with these plants. You need to give them the right balance of different nutrients for everything to be available. And it's, it all kind of works itself out, guys. This isn't, you know, this is mother nature here. You know, we don't need to really be intervening all that much. If you enjoyed this one, guys, let me know down in the comments. Uh, check us out on uh, Fig Boss, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care.